Well, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for coming to the Peter Tork Memorial Monkeys Convention. I'm Charles Rosenay, the producer of the show. I'm a first-generation Monkeys fan. I promoted, along with Maggie McManus, the first Monkeys Convention where a monkey actually appeared. It was 1982, and Peter Tork was our special guest. He played with our band Monkey Mania, he signed autographs, and he actually spoke on stage. I'll never forget how eloquently he talked about John Lennon's passing at that show. I was probably closer friends with Davey, and um, he was a guest at one of my Beatle conventions, actually. And I've probably interviewed and taken more pictures with Mickey than any of the other guys. And I actually got to meet and uh, hug Nez a few years ago. But it's Peter who always have a place in my heart. He was special guest for us in 82. He was a guest along with Davey, Mickey, Boyce, and Hart at our 1987 National Monkeys Convention. He guested again at the 2013 Davey Jones Memorial Monkeys Convention. But he was also my guest at a Beatles Expo in 2009, where he appeared with me uh, on TV stations to promote the show. That was really special. 
He was always there for me, and I wanted to pay tribute for him as we did to Davey in 2013. But this show had to be in Connecticut, where Peter and his family lived, and he loved Connecticut. And in February, not only because it's the one-year anniversary of his passing, but also it's his birthday month. Well, we put together this very special video tribute I hope you'll enjoy, edited by my son Ian. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this video. Let's love one another, and let's make the world shine. Hello, everybody. This is Fred Velez, the author of the book, A Little Bit Me, A Little Bit You, from The Monkeys, From a Fan's Perspective. I wish I could be there. I really wanted, wanted to be there, but I hope everyone is having a good time and remembering our dear Peter Tork. Uh, Peter was the very first member of The Monkeys that I got to know on a personal basis. He was always very kind, very sweet to the fans, as many of you know that. Um, I saw Peter's last concert in uh, 2017 at Westbury. My heart is with you, and please remember Peter. Please be good to one another. Please love one another. As Peter sang in his song, uh, For Pete's Sake, we were made to love one another, and love is understanding. God bless you all, and blessings. Peace. Today we're celebrating Peter Tork, and we're in the hills above Hollywood with Valerie, who was in several dozen episodes of The Monkees, starting with the pilot, and that is where you first met Peter Tork. Yes, it is. I met Peter Tork on the pilot, and I, as I met all of the boys on the pilot, and it was a kind of a different show in that day and age. I think it paved the road for television. And we all became very, very good friends. And Peter especially was very close to me. And uh, after the pilot, he didn't really have a place to stay. So I called my roommate and I said, would you mind if I bring this actor home and he could stay with us a while? And she said, sure. And so I brought Peter home and I noticed that he didn't have his banjo. And I said, Peter, where's your banjo? And he said, oh, it was hard times and he had to hawk it, he had to pawn it. And so I said, well, we can't have that. So I took him to the pawn shop, we got the banjo out and he sang and he played for us. And we laughed together, we ate together, we did, um, we really had a lot of fun. And. heartaches and the loss. So, God bless you, Peter. God bless you. Hello there, Monkey fans. I'm Liberty DeVito, and I hope you're having a great time at the Peter Talk tribute. I've always been a fan of the Monkees, as you can see by the albums that I have behind me. These are the original vinyls that I bought when uh, the Monkees were popular when I was a kid. Um, yes, but I do have a favorite monkey picture, and this is it right here. See that picture down there? The lady in that picture is my wife, Anna. Anna used to work for the monkeys. She said they were great guys and they were a lot of fun. I'm a little jealous of Peter in this picture, but hey, I've learned to get over it. Anyway, you guys have a good time and I hope to see you soon. Here's to Peter Talk and the monkeys. Ciao. Since this one hit a little harder than I thought it would when he passed last year, I am very grateful of having known him for many years for knowing how much he loved his work, his passions, his fans, and how someone who was able to pick himself up when he was down after leaving the Monkees in 1968 and lived his life the way he wanted. My fondest memory of Peter was while interviewing him for my book, A Manufactured Image, we chatted about his many songs he had recorded while in the group. A lot was uh, unreleased at the time. His reaction when I presented him with a tape of his unreleased material from the acetates that I had obtained at the time was priceless. It was the look of a child getting a special gift for Christmas that they thought they would never would. I was quite pleased how things did turn out for him during the 80s reunion and he was able to get a second chance of enjoying his music again. So I say, Peter, it was an honor to know you and we as fans and will always have you in our heart. You meant a lot to us and will continue to do so thanks to your music, the shows, the concerts, and of course the fans. Thank you. Hi, all you monkey friends. How are ya? We both have something in common. We 
both love Carol King and she wrote some fabulous music for us both. Love ya. Hey, hello, Fred Schneider from the B-52s. Hey, it's Fred from the B-52s. How is everybody doing? I just want to tell you that the Monkees were always one of my favorite bands. I especially liked the CD and album Head and the movie. And they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but then everyone should. Um, but uh, Peter Tork was a great guy. We uh, did uh, shows with the Monkees uh, years ago, and he was great. They were all great. It was, it was really exciting for us. And um, it's a great loss not to have them with us anymore. Peter Ursop Ederson had a big name, Orky. This big name, Orky, loved pie. He loved pizza pie, pumpkin pie, pineapple pie, pizza pie, minced tarts. And Peter Ursop Ederson's big Orky loved pie for breakfast, pie for lunch, pie in the afternoon, and pie before he went to bed. Peter Ursula Patterson's big porky ate so much pie that do you know what he did? He popped. Hi everyone. It's an honor for me to be here tonight as we remember my good friend Peter Tork and celebrate his life, his music, and uh, my dear friend. Um, I will always remember Peter for his music, for the fun he gave all of us. And um, also tonight, we will be remembering my dear friend Davy Jones. And it's a very special year since it is leap year. And it's the year uh, that Davy was kissed by an angel and left this planet on my birthday, which is leap year. I'm a leap year baby. So I remember both of them today with much love. And um, it's a great loss for all of us. And I remember all of the monkeys, really, and I'm so grateful for their having sung the song that my husband wrote, Daydream Believer, and making it one of the most popular songs in the world today, even. And I send all my love to the family, to the friends, and to all the fans, as we all remain daydream believers and live in love and remember Peter today and Davy and all of the monkeys. I send all my love. Thank you. I want to say hello to all the monkeys. All the monkeys and their fans. We love you. Hey everybody, all you monkey fans out there. This is Jay Siegel, the lead singer of the Tokens. I guess some of you may remember that. You remember that, right? The lion something or other. Anyway, uh, I had the pleasure of working with the, uh, with the monkeys back in the, uh, I guess it was the 70s. And uh, they actually recorded a song that I was part writer on called Laugh. And it was the second, it was on the second album, More of the Monkeys. And I think it sold about, I don't know, at least four million albums when it first came out. And it was really great working with those guys. And I uh, hope you all have a great time. Hello, I'm Billy Hinchy of Dino, Desi, and Billy and the Beach Boys. As some of you may know, Carl Wilson was my brother-in-law. And we lost Carl to cancer in 1998 and we started the Carl Wilson Foundation, or CWF. Well, in 2002, we did an event on the beach in Santa Monica, and what do you know, Peter showed up, and someone handed him an electric guitar, and he sang and played along with us on a lot of great songs, and we just had a blast, and we were so thankful that he was there that day, and uh, we miss him, and we sure want to salute him today and every day. God bless you, Peter. Hi, fans and friends of Peter Tork. I'm another friend of Peter Tork's. I was his personal assistant for a time, um, but more than that, we were friends. He was like a brother to me. I could share so many stories with you, but I think I'll just share my beginning and my ending. So it was around 2004, and I'm sitting at a table across from Peter at Starbucks talking about how he would speak at E.O. Smith's graduation because he was part of the first graduating class at that high school. Funny story there in that he wanted an hour, he wanted Shoe Sway Blues to come and play at graduation, and I had to remind him that this was a graduation and it was about the kids. Um, I didn't know then that he would be calling me a period of time later to ask me to be his assistant, and I didn't know then that it would be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. The ending was when, uh, a few months before he passed away, and I saw him at his home, and he clearly didn't look well. 
um, what struck me about that visit was that he kept repeating how he wanted to have a YouTube concert for his fans. He knew that he wasn't well enough to perform live, but he wanted to perform. And that struck me as being very sad because I knew it wouldn't happen. In fact, I left that visit and went to the car and sobbed. And I didn't know it then, but that would be my last visit with Peter. I appreciate the time that I had with him. I love and miss him. I got to meet many great people like James Lee Stanley, who I think is there with you today. I share in my grief at his loss, but I know that he would want happy stories shared today. And there's so many fun stories about Peter, the man we all know and love. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stevie Kerr. I played in a relatively early version of Shoe Suede Blues, and um, I'm on the Live at Harvell's CD, as well as the video documentary of a gig we did in, um, in Orange County called Thank You Lovers of the Opera. I have a number of different memories about Peter, but one in particular is an understanding that he knew more about musical history than I knew he did, and it was evidenced by... Um, one night we were, I was riding, I was driving him home from uh, a gig in the Orange County area, and we were, we were listening to the classical music, musical station out of USC called KUSC. And I'm listening to this piece of music, we're listening to this piece of music, and I'm going, hmm, God, it's a nice piece of music, I wonder who that is. And Peter said, sounds like Prokofiev. And so, you know, we waited until the, the back announced, and it was indeed a Prokofiev piece, and I didn't know that. And I'd been listening to a lot of classical music, and I was impressed by that. I just was. I mean, there were other memories, too. There was some really cool stuff. Um, um, I guess one of them we spoke about is um, I went to the last Beatles concert at uh, Kansas Stick Park in uh, 1966. And I remember walking out, and all these kids were handing out uh, flyers, say, well, I thought, as they said, I, I, when I was mentioning this to him, I thought, the monkeys are coming, monkeys are coming. And he goes, no, it was, the monkeys is coming, the monkeys is coming. So is that, does anybody out there have a copy or an original version of that flyer? The monkeys is coming, the monkeys is coming. Anyway, rest in peace, Peter. Hey, Charles, John Billings here. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to say something about Peter Tork. I think the memory that I always take away from Peter... Um, I started working with, with him and the Monkees in 2011. I always was impressed with what a great family guy Peter was and how much he loved Pam and how much he loved the kids. And he was always really great to them, gave them a lot of attention, a lot of his time. And uh, to me, being a father and a husband, that meant a lot to me, seeing that in him as well. Also, getting out on stage with him at night. He's a musician's musician, so he was always paying attention to what was going on around him. And it was kind of cool being up there and knowing that he was hearing what you're doing and, and uh, that you were part of the, the bigger picture there and that he appreciated it. That was really cool. I miss the guy. He was a lot of fun. He was a lot of laughs. And uh, I have a lot of great memories with that dude on stage and off stage as well. Thank you guys so much. Have a great time. Hi, everyone. It's Felipe Torres. So glad you could all make it on behalf of Peter and all his friends and family. Um, I wanted to share a little story with you as I uh, walking the streets of New Orleans, one of the last cities that uh, we went to with uh, Peter and the 45th anniversary monkey tour that was on with them. Uh, I'd known Peter for many years as I'd played in Davies' band and with the monkeys. And uh, what was really cool is that when we were on the UK leg of that year's tour, um, there was a volcano. That wasn't the cool part. The volcano erupted and it stopped the airports from letting in airplanes. So. There was a possible blues gig that Peter had up in between our monkey shows, and uh, his drummer wasn't going to be able to make it. So over lunch, when we just heard that the airports were closed, he asked me if I would play. Um, so, sure, I said, yeah, no problem. And we started talking about songs and blues, and, and he started to ask me, well, where do you like to hear music? And I said, well, the two favorite places of mine for blues would be Chicago and New Orleans. He said, why not Texas? I said, well, I like Texas too, but New Orleans is just the most fun. So. Um, so this made me think of him, and uh, then uh, we didn't get to do the gig actually after all. But one night on that same uh, tour, we were both on this like double decker tour bus, and uh, he kind of just kind of hang wanted to hang out, talk blues and rock and stuff, and it was really cool because 
no one else was around. It was kind of our private hang, and I think that was the beauty in Peter's soul, that he loved music endlessly, and uh, anything about it that uh, he could contribute, he was into that, you know? He wanted to try and did play many, many styles of music and wrote many styles of music, and, uh, you know, he was just into so many things, and that was really inspiring that he uh, wanted to take the time to hang out and chat with me on that. So I uh, hope that gives you guys something to uh, enjoy and uh, think about, and cheers to Peter. Hey, Monkey fans, Sandy Gennaro here. And as you know, I've been fortunate enough to be part of every Monkey reunion tour from around 1987 till Davy Jones passed away in 2012. And one of the highlights was hanging with Peter. Peter Talk was just a funny guy, a great sense of humor. And one of the things that impressed me the most about Peter was the fact that he had a tremendous knowledge of the blues. He was a student of blues music. And one of the funniest things he ever told me was the name of his solo band, Outside the Monkeys. The band that he played with Outside the Monkeys was called Shoe Suede Blues. What it's, that, that title only exhibits his sense of humor and his, uh, his, his nice quirky little brain of his. God bless you, Peter. Rest in peace. And God bless all of you monkey fans. Have a great time. Bye-bye. Hello, everybody at the Peter Tour Convention. This is your old pal, Rich Dark, current drummer from the Monkees and from Mickey Dolan, saying hi and thank you so much for coming out and celebrating the life of my dear friend, Peter Tork. I would love to be there with you guys, enjoying all that the convention has to offer, especially since it's 10 minutes from my house. But, unfortunately, I am not in Connecticut this weekend. I am in Tucson, Arizona with another monkey, Mr. Mickey Dolans. We are performing with the Tucson Symphony. And probably about the time you're watching this, I am leading the band and the symphony through a rehearsal for tonight's performance. So, unfortunately... I'm nowhere near you guys, even though I would love to be there. Peter was very, very special to me. He had a very wonderful way about him, and we had a very close bond. Uh, in addition to being in the Monkees with him, I was also the drummer for Shoe Suede Blues for a couple gigs. And probably the coolest thing was I was his tour manager for his East Coast leg of his solo tour a few years back. What does that mean? Well, that meant that we spent a lot of time in my minivan driving up and down the East Coast from gig to gig. So we got to talk a lot. We got to laugh a lot. I cried a lot. No, I didn't cry at all. I had the best time, and that was probably some of the most special moments I've spent with Peter. We uh, talked about music, we talked about life, we talked about influences, we talked about different things. It was such a great time, and I loved performing with the man. I loved everything about him. I miss him dearly. I love you all, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Hey, everybody. This is Wayne Avers, guitar player and the band leader for the Monkees, and I just wanted to say hi and say how great I think it is that you all are getting together to celebrate Peter's life today at the convention. Um, I played with Peter from 1996, the 30th anniversary tour, through the 50th anniversary tour in uh, 2016. And uh, I'm proud to say he was a good friend and a really great guy, and it was always great to be in a band with him. Um, one of my favorite songs and things we always got to play was For Pete's Sake, the, as a guitar player, I always loved and uh, we're gonna be playing that song. And Mickey always uh, says a little something special about Peter before we play it. So uh, you guys, I hope you have a great day and hope to see you soon and enjoy the convention. <laughs> Out here. I wanted to say hello to all you Peter Tork fans as you make your way to the Monkeys Convention. I hope you will have an absolutely great time. I was lucky in 1986 to tour with the Monkeys on their 20-year uh, reunion tour, and Peter and I oftentimes traveled in the same vehicle. So I got to know him well, 
Uh, he was a good guy and I liked him a lot. So I hope you will have a wonderful time celebrating his life. I wish I could be there with you. Until later, take care of yourselves. Have fun. Bye for now. Hi everybody, Tommy James here. And I would just like to say thank you and how honored I am to participate in the Peter Tork Memorial Monkeys Convention. And I distinctly remember the first time I ever worked with Peter and the Monkeys. It was in 1967 at the peak of their career in the Atlanta, Georgia baseball stadium. And uh, wow, what an amazing experience to work with the Monkeys. Um, uh, I, <laughs> all I remember, we opened for them and we got a nice, nice hand. It was uh, a lot of applause and screaming, but when the monkeys came on, it was absolutely unbelievable. I had never heard such screaming in my life. In fact, it was so intense because the, the ballpark was packed. I never heard anything like that in my life. And, um, uh, over the years, uh, I got to know Peter. Uh, we ran into each other several times in airports. I saw him perform uh, in a nightclub, as a matter of fact, uh, in New Jersey. And uh, I was also very honored to uh, write a song for their reunion album. The album was called Pool It. It was out on Rhino in 87. And um, uh, the song I wrote for them was a, a song called Don't Bring Me Down. And they did it, and did it great. And I, I just uh, have been so honored over the years to know the members of the Monkees. And uh, so thank you again for having me. God bless everybody. Okay. Hi, uh, this is from Pete to Pete. Good memory, son. Always will be. Pete to Pete, out. Hi everybody, it's Bobby Hart here. Sorry I missed the convention, but I wanted to say thank you to everybody to, for coming and hello and uh, talk just a short moment about Peter Tork who we're honoring in this convention. You know, four or five years ago when my book came out, I started touring more than I had for a long time. And uh, in the process of going to these uh, celebrity uh, signings and signing books and so forth, I crossed paths with Peter Tork on the road and we ended up having a wonderful time of hanging out and uh, actually got to sing with him. And so when I heard about Peter's passing, I just felt such a blessing that I had had that last year uh, of spending with Peter, of uh, watching him backstage, uh, showing uh, wonderful chord progressions to the guitar players of the band that would never have thought of a chord like that of talking about reminiscing about the old days and singing together and uh, realized that I had spent more time with Peter Tork that year than I had in the 50 some years before that when I, since I first knew him. So what a blessing. He'll always be with us in his music and his television shows uh, in our memories. Uh, and so just a, a wonderful thing to have known him and uh, love to you all. Hello, everybody. Um, I really appreciate you all getting together and celebrating Peter's life. Um, what can I say? I mean, it's uh, it did not come as a huge shock because we knew that he had some health challenges. But nevertheless, when you lose a, a brother, and he was, he was like a brother to me, a brother I never had. And... Um, like I said, I really appreciate you all getting together and celebrating his wonderful life and his wonderful craftsmanship, his art, his music. Uh, he was one of a kind, you know. What can I say? Hi, everybody. Welcome. I suppose that's what you say to a memorial service. So this is kind of Peter's memorial, like the one we gave for Davey. And in terms of the way I'll keep Peter in my life, because he'll be there forever, just like he will in yours, um, is I will remember him as infinite and eternal, which means I'll have to turn to his spiritual individuality to understand that, which I will do. Uh, that's the least 
uh, I could do for him and the most I can do with him. So um, I'll make that effort. And in that effort will be uh, all my gratitude and appreciation for my years of having been able to work with him. Some of them were hard times. Pete and I did not get along. We weren't playmates. We were work associates. But uh, he was obviously a bright guy. He was obviously a dedicated musician. Uh, he was tentative a bit in our records that we made. But I have to say, he really brought headquarters to life uh, with his banjo introduction to, um, is it You Just May Be The One? That one, I think. You told and, me. Oh, I'm sorry. It's You Told Me. Yeah. When I heard that ringing, uh, frailed banjo over the top of my 12th string, I thought, boy, this is good. This is really, really good. It's like the first time I ever saw one of our little music videos in that silly farm sketch that we did for Papa Jean's Blues. And that Papa Jean's came on, I thought, boy, this is really, really good. And there was a time when Pete and I and Mick and Dave, we came off of the stage in Hawaii, I think. It was the first show, or one of the first shows. And Peter said, you know, I think there was somebody on that stage with us. And I, I didn't know anybody. I wasn't, I wasn't working high then, like I was now. <laughs> when you work high, all these people show up on stage that you've never seen before, at least. That's my experience with it. So, um, but it was when he said that, I thought to myself, yeah, there was another presence. And Peter said, do you know who I think that is? I said, tell me. He said, I think that's the monkeys. And I thought, well, that's there's a moment of profundity for me. I'll take it home. <laughs> So that was Pete's contribution to my time with the monkeys and my understanding of Peter. I wish him well, I know he's well, and I hope all the joy that's available pours into his life. Ab def gish kol nap kristav wikshiz. What was that? It's the alphabet. Ab def gish kol nap kristav wikshiz. My name is Peter Tork. I was born in Washington, D.C. in 1942. I used to belong to the Monkees, and I'm a raconteur, and a musician, and a bon vivant, and a man about town. Peter Tork. So I'm going to do this to remind me of those days in hopes that it cheers me up. It's called um, Till Then, which will come as no surprise when you hear the lyric, which is just full of that line. Till then, my darling, please wait for me. Till then, no matter when it will be. Till then, when I can hold you again, please wait. Till then, our dreams will live though we are apart. Our love, I know we'll keep in our heart. Till then, when all the world will be free, please wait for me. I know there are oceans we must cross. And mountains we must climb I know every gain must have its loss So pray that our loss is nothing but time Till then we'll call on each memory Till then no matter when it will be Till then when I can hold you again, please wait till then, till then. We'll call on each memory till then, no matter when it will be till then. When I can hold you again, please wait till then. Please wait till then. Mm -hmm.